All righty. Hey, you guys. Good morning, afternoon, evening. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well <laughs> through this crazy winter storm that we're having in California. And I know you guys are having it probably wherever you are. Okay. We go from drought to floods. You know, it just amazing. But um, we're weathering it well. Um, we have a a, a a ranch. Actually, it's a hotel owned by Clint Eastwood, who was once our mayor here in Carmel. He owns this beautiful um, hotel that many times we used to stay there before we moved here. And we just uh, saw that it's flooded. They have a sheep pasture. And unfortunately, it's flooded all the sheep out. Jan is swinging by there right now as we speak to find out what we can do from the community to help them. And um, <clears throat> we're going to you know, do whatever we can, you know, what, because it's a, it's a landmark location. It's Clint Eastwood. It's uh, in our community. I think it's really important that we, we band together in these times of extreme crisis that we've been having and, and see how we can help each other. So she's out on a mission to uh, do that. Jared got a foot of snow. Wow. Oh, half a foot. Okay, half foot of snow on the ground. Wow. We're getting snow in California. I don't know if you caught that. I don't remember if Doton mentioned that, but he said it was snowing in L.A. on the hills in Malibu. Malibu is, you know... <laughs> If you've ever been there, it's not what you usually associate with snow. So we've got some interesting stuff we're dealing with. All right, so uh, let's get started here. Let me... Um, oh, I'm sorry, that's the wrong screen. Marco, let's get the screen set. Okay, well, listen, you guys know I don't want that screen either. That's a... Okay. I am Mark Silber. I'm an author and educator in Carmel, California. And this show is brought to you again by our friends at Bay Photo. Look what they've got for you guys. 20% off on acrylic prints. Those are really cool. Let's see how you can hang those up. There's a, a photographer here in my town, actually two of them that have galleries here that specialize in acrylics. Um, you know, he, he, this one has pictures of waves and underwater prints, and another one has, like, lots of mountain uh, landscapes, that sort of thing. But they're very eye-catchy. 20% off on acrylics. These are fine art canvas prints. You can see they go around the canvas. That can be a cool look. And then 25% uh, off there. But the one that I really think is, you guys ought to jump on, is... 40% off on large prints. You got to buy two or more, but 40% off is a pretty huge savings. So uh, we'll put that link in the chat there. You guys should take advantage of that. Listen, it's so important. You know, you hear me say this over and over again. It's so important to get your stuff into print. And many of you guys have won stuff i know beth ann has and you guys have won prints speaking of prints i got to give a shout out to chris thank you chris for i haven't replied to you yet because i've been so friggin busy but um chris sent me his blur book we're jan and i were looking at it. it's just awesome thank you chris well done um i want i want to you know figure out a way where you can post it on uh, AYP plus and AYP club let everybody see it let's let's get it out there to the world so again well done we're going to be you're going to you're going to be hearing more about blur i can't tell you what exactly yet but you'll be hearing more about it okay let's get our uh and good to see you back with us Stephen. having moved to prescott arizona you're not very far from winslow right where you took that cool trip and photographed. Everybody knows this. It's actually Jackson Brown wrote the song, and then the Eagles picked it up and made it even more famous, I believe. Standing on a corner in Winslow, Arizona. My bad singing. Okay. Anyway, you're nearby, I bet. That's pretty cool. A lot warmer than it is here. Well, listen, I want to tell you the story about this photograph. This was... Um, Gosh, what year was that? 2017, I think? We had 
another year, unfortunately, of fires. All too often in California, we have forest fires. This was a photograph that I took in Yosemite uh, at Glacier Point. If you've ever been to Yosemite, Glacier Point is high above the valley. I did a shoot there with Michael Adams in 2008. Just unbelievable. Uh, Ansel Adams' son. It was uh, snowed in. Uh, they they actually had just opened the road, but not to tourists at all. So because he's Ansel Adams' son, they gave us a special entrance. I have that video. That video is there, and it even shows the rangers opening the gates for us. We went up there. This is a place that's usually inhabited by thousands or hundreds of tourists. There was not a soul there except for... Michael and I and our camera team and a couple of rangers. Unbelievable. And we got to look out into Yosemite. So if you see that video, it actually appears in a couple of different places uh, with Ansel Adams. That's Glacier Point. So Jan and I went back there. I think it was 17. I may have the date wrong. I'm sorry. But uh, during this forest fire, you can see in the background, that's not bad processing. That's smoke. And it almost makes it look like a, a backdrop, doesn't it? Kind of like a fakey backdrop <laughs> because that smoke is just obscuring the trees and making it, you know, very hazy. Now, I really like this photograph because, because I like animals a lot. <laughs> I do, you know, I like dogs, I like deer, I like horses, I like most every animal. Some I'm not crazy about, I'm not crazy about hedgehogs, <clears throat> porcupines. But this deer, and I've had, I've had good luck with having deer and horses and dogs pose for me. Somebody asked me once, well, what's your technique, Mark? You know, you must have some technique for getting animals to pose for you. Well... You know, it's just like any, they're another being, right? How do you get somebody else to feel comfortable around you? You know, you, without sounding too, you know, California, -y, it's just like your vibes. <laughs> you know, if you've got a, a threatening vibe, you know, a camera could look an awful lot like a gun too, a scope on a gun. Now, fortunately, these animals, these deer are not threatened by that because there's no hunting going on there. But nonetheless, they can spook like any animal. Um, and the, to me, the, the real trick is just be disarming, just like, you know, Deanne Fitzmaurice mentioned that about doing her street photography in Cuba. She's out on the corner of the street and these guys kind of looked at her like, who is this? You know, what is she doing? And she smiled at them and just made a contact and showed that she wasn't there to do something weird and, you know twist things around and do some kind of strange story or whatever. She's just capturing photographs in Cuba. Same thing, I believe, with any animal. Um, if you have a clean slate, you're, you're not there for any weird purpose. You're not going to shoot them. You're not going to throw rocks at them. You're just trying to capture their beauty. And um, that's what I did. Um, Florian Schultz, amazing wildlife photographer, made the point of make sure their eyes are sharp, you know, because we connect with people's eyes and we connect with animals' eyes. Now, the, I don't remember what my depth of field, I'm going to guess it was like 5.6 because, you know, the trees are starting to fade out there. But I did make sure I focused on her eyes. Uh, you know, we can only see one of them there. And again, just captured a portrait. This is an environmental portrait by definition. It's her environment, not mine. And I'm letting her just show me her, the beauty of her and against that backdrop. So that's the story of that photograph. Let's look at your photographs. So here we go, Jared, we got the first one. This is a pretty spectacular image. Whose is this? Jared, I think I lost your audio. If you're there, okay, I'm getting a message from you. Maybe we need to click on something. Hang on a second. Oh, you're in the green room. Sorry about that. 
I am going to, where are we? Sorry, Jared. There we go. Now you should be able to talk. Are you there? Okay. Sorry, folks. We're having a little technical difficulty. You should be there. Uh, let's try this other one. I don't know why we're not hearing you. I'm going to... You are there. Okay. Jared, can you speak now and let us know? Well, okay. Hang on, guys. I'll just try a couple more tricks and see if I can get Jared to... So I don't really know why your audio isn't showing up here. Um, yeah, I know it says, oh, you, it's saying you're still in the green room. Let's try this. You are uh, there. Okay. I show that you're not in the green room. Let's try this. Okay. Well, that's, we don't want that screen. Sorry about that. Okay. Get rid of that. You guys get to see this silly stuff behind the scenes. Um, I don't know why we're not seeing you, Jared. I just don't know what's the deal here. So, should be my uh, my. I'm still sharing my screen. Okay, I can hear you now. So oh, you can hear me now. It's okay. Something about that scene. Um, let's do this. Uh, also, while people are here, they should definitely be subscribing. I think. Oh yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you for reminding me. We'll go backwards <laughs> here. If you guys haven't subscribed, do so. Enable the bell. You get to see all sorts of flubby stuff like I'm doing right now. You don't want to miss And uh, while you're getting that set up, I can make sure to remind people uh, that if you want your photos to be included in today's show, you can join the AYP Club, which I'll be grabbing a link to and putting it into the, uh, into the chat so that you can submit your photos. And today we have a very special prize. Oh, yes. Um, so if your photo is brought onto the show, then you're going to be entered in to win a free month of AYP+. Plus. That's pretty uh, cool. So you'll get right? that after the show, available to anyone that has submitted a photo. So submit your photos here. I'll be keeping an eye. So if you're not a member already, you can request to become a member and I'll prove you. Uh, put your photos in. And we'll do a drawing at the very end uh, to get people in. Okay, Jared, for some reason, I'm only getting this screen on yours. I'm not sure why that Let is. me try. Uh, I'm going to yeah. share my screen again. Yeah, do that again. So Maybe hopefully it's... that'll show up. Okay, now we're seeing if you can do it on this that's... screen. That's my virtual camera, which I don't have on. My okay, camera is not plugged let's in. Let's try this here. All right. Sorry, you guys. I think I got it. Boom. There okay. we go. Now we hear Jared. We see him. We see the photograph. Thank you All for right. putting up with us shenanigans behind the scenes. So let's hear about this image. All right. This photo is from Lucien. Uh, and this was taken on the Isle of Wight in England. Wow. That's a spectacular image. There's a lot I love about this. The uh, the long exposure with the, you know, the S-curve. We've already got the S-curve of the road, and then we got a long exposure. Brilliant. And, <clears throat> you know, the, the uh, flares in the lights do really a great job. Bingo. Well done. Isle of Wight is a pretty amazing place. There were a lot of rock concerts done there. I've never been there, but I'd like to go. And I didn't know they had these kinds of uh, storybook villages. This is what we have in where I live in Carmel, California. We have these thatched roofs and, you know, these beautiful, cute little cottages and that sort of thing. But the long exposure with the reflection on the road, it it's a home run. You got it. And, and you know, you've got different lights. You have, you know, it's it always works well with lighting to have, um, different color of light so you have you're in the blue hour you can see the blue sky after the golden hour we hit the blue hour uh, and you're you're hitting various types of lights each one of these bulbs is a little different we have the white light there and the street light and then the one over in the bottom corner that one's a little different and the color inside these buildings or the house is a little different 
you know, you've got three or four different white, uh, different colors of, you know, color temperatures here, which is great. Normally that's a problem, you know, if you're trying to shoot a portrait or something, but in this case it adds another dimension to the photograph. So awesome. Well, all right. Done. It's very and, cool. And uh, Alan asked a good question. What's your shutter speed? Uh, we would love for exposure. you to comment and let us know uh, what your long uh, exposure. Yeah, I'd like yeah. to hear that because you, you don't even see a blur of the car. It's just headlights. So tells yeah. me it's like a minute or so, you know, because the car had to kind of enter the top and then come back. I, I assume it's coming that way. I don't know. It could be the other way. I think, no. Well, that's it would the be headlight. red lights, though, usually. Yeah, it would be the red lights the other way. So it's a headlight coming through there. I'm going to guess a, at least a minute. Let's hear what you have to say, Lucen. Well done. Okay. I love it. All right. And we just mentioned AYP Plus. Yeah. And on Tuesday, we had a fantastic we did. Uh, class with Doton Sagai on uh, how to edit black and whites with Silver Effects Pro. And so one of our AYP Plus members, Amy, uh, has uh, done some work on it after that class uh, with one of her uh, famous self-portraits that we love to have here on the show. Yeah. And uh, so this is what she did with it. And I said in that class, bonus points for anybody who does a, uh, a uh, edit with Silver Effects Pro. Let's talk about this edit. I like, I like the image. I love your your self-portraits. I think they're just <laughs> intriguing and, you know, they draw me in. You, 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 you have a, you definitely have a style, Amy, that I think is really interesting. And looking at your edit itself. So one of the things we went over about why Silver Effects Pro is such a powerful program is you can get a, a very wide dynamic range, including the use of Ansel Adams zone system. Ansel Adams wasn't the sole originator of that system. Uh, I believe he developed it with another photographer named Minor White. I have to go, I'd have to dig back into my history. Pretty sure it was Minor White, who you, many of you haven't heard of before. I have written about him in AYP. But they developed this system as a way of looking at the world from the dark, uh, darkest portions of an image to pure white. So pure black to pure white. And it's a zone system that, so you can see if you're getting that full dynamic range in our modern world, it's become much easier to do this in the darkroom days. You had to be a real wizard sometimes to get that full range, but now we can do it relatively easily. And the great thing about this software, the silver effects pros, it will show you, where you are in that zone system. It'll show you if you have a zone zero. It'll show you if you have a zone five, which is middle gray. It'll show you if you have a, a, a you know, a zone 10. Anyway, well done, Amy. I, I see you also chose out of there to uh, put an edge on it like it's a photo frame, which is a film frame, which is cool. That's a cool look. I've done that myself. We could even think this was shot with film because of that. So bravo, well done. And I said that you would get bonus points. And uh, there you go. So Chris said the skin tone contrast is exceptional. Yeah, I mean, you, you're you the artist here. It's your vision. And we, we had uh, Doton process a couple of your guys. He process John and uh, Jared's and you know that's always tricky for somebody else to process your images because you have your own vision and, and you know I think I made a little disclaimer note of that it's really your vision Dota and I thought made some good suggestions but at the end of the day it's all your work so don't accept anybody else's process or cropping if you don't agree with it so this is all you Amy well done I want to see more of these. All right. Our next one. This is from Jeremy Linfield. Uh, and this was taken uh, shots from the sunset tonight. Oh, wow. So just last night, I'm assuming. Uh, yeah, I think it was uh, w within the last couple nights. I love this image. You know, I, I, you know, I'm a big fan of having people in a landscape. 
as you know, they add uh, scale, they are punctuation points, and I just find them more interesting than just looking at rocks. So you've got uh, you've got a lot of cool things working for you here. You know, the scale of the rocks, uh, kind of just juxtaposition with the this you know the little people. They're really just far down the beach, and there's a kind of a leading line that curves around to them around this little coastline. Yeah, you can see the curve of it, which works brilliantly. Um, you've, you've chosen a really soft edit for the clouds and the sky. Um, you know, I might go a little darker on it. I might use a uh, gradient filter, but that's you. I mean, again, it, it has a certain look to it, and I, I like that. Um, <clears throat> So, you know, bravo, well done. It's a, it's a very, it tells a little story, which, I, you know, is really what we're trying to do with our photographs. Good job. All right. Uh, we do have a comment. Leon Smith, he's thinking that the zone system might have been Fred developed Archer. by Thank Fred you. Archer. Thank good, you. Good, good call. I have Fred's book. I do have that. And you're right. I think Fred did it with uh, Ansel. Miner had a hand in there somehow. I mean, it was like these guys were all kind of chatting with each other and probably talking it up over. A, <laughs> they were kind of wild guys, you know. They probably had a beer party or drinking whiskey or something. And <laughs> what if we had a system that could, you know, portray, you know, where where the the range was in these things? They didn't have a vocabulary for this stuff. Now we do. So they probably got together and were tossing this around. But yeah, Fred, I do think you're right about that. I do have his book, so thank you. Yeah, and Stephen uh, had a good comment too. Yeah, yeah. So let's put that up here. And uh, so I like the cameras low enough to make the composition more interesting. Yes, that was a good one, because we're looking low from the frame up high, and that definitely works really well. It's a good call on that, Stephen. Yes, and. Bonus points for not shooting at eye level. Anytime you guys find a different angle than just walking around shooting at eye level, yes, it makes a big difference. You notice how your eye just wants to go up the frame, and that's really well done. All right. All right. Here's one. This is from Ellen, Don in Sonoma. Super cool, Ellen. And I... Uh, you know, Sonoma's not far from me. That's some pretty wild dawn. I don't know if that's during fire season or if that was recent, because that looks like a, to me, could very well be a smoky sky. We have these brilliant sunsets. Unfortunately, you know, Bob Holmes talked about traveling to India and with all the pollution, you get these amazing sunsets. I, I'm thinking it was, but it may not be. Then you have the, the fog, uh, you know, in the field with the cows, you've got your one cow kind of dead, almost dead center, not quite, who my eye goes to right away. So, you know, that works really well. And of course, just this wild sky there, just burning sky with a very muted background of depth. I was talking yesterday, uh, I'm making a, a new AYP class, new AYP course is coming up. Um, and I was talking about the challenge, and, and this is in the book, right? So the challenge we have as photographers, we're, we're shooting, we're capturing three-dimensional items out in the world. This is three-dimensional, but we're translating it to a two-dimensional universe. It's, it's like a camera is two-dimensional. But the trick is, how can you give the feeling of space? How can you give the feeling of that other dimension? And one way to do that is to have the background fade out like this. Now, you photographed it, and it was going to naturally look that way. But if you imagine for a minute, visualize it being the background being very sharp and very bright, it would close the space. It would flatten it out. But because the background fades off, it gives a layer back there and adds a layer 
to the image. And you do have three layers here, very distinct. You have the foreground with the two, the three cows in it, and the middle ground with the other set of cows and that line of bushy whatever trees or whatever that is. And then the actually you have four layers, and then you have the the uh, mountains. And then behind the mountains are the clouds. So it's four different distinct layers in your image. Well done. Bravo. So so let's see what you said. Actually, not during fire season. Pretty close to the original color. I had to crop in a lot. Okay, that's crazy sunset, sunrise. Well done. Awesome. Thank you. All for right. The note. Our next one, this is from Kevin. Uh, and Kevin wrote, Spectacular Evening for a Moonlit Walk. This was taken in uh, Lowell, Michigan. You guys are hitting the... Boy, every one of you. Well done. I love it. Moonlight. Wow, that's not easy to capture. What was your exposure on that? Uh, you know, the moon is our punctuation point. The clouds are amazing. Amazing pattern. The... Uh, you know, you've you've got uh, also a relatively low lowish angle here. You're kind of, you know, we're getting this shot going upwards into the sky. I like to photograph clouds. Sometimes they're, you know, I have a story about photographing right into the dusk, and nothing on the ground level was really visible because it was actually past dusk. And I, oops, oops, sorry about that. Yeah. And I uh, was almost going to give up, you know, it was too dark. And then I looked up and I saw the clouds and I went, whoa, that's the image. And you've done the same thing here with the moonshine. And the, you got a nice starburst on it. That's fantastic. Well done. Who's next? Bring that All other right. One. Uh, so this one is Mache. Uh, I believe that's pronouncing it right. I was trying to get the name. Uh, so that I could make sure I was getting it right, but I accidentally brought the photo up. Uh, and I don't believe that... Okay, uh, so this caption for this one, back to warmer days, summer vacation, a little travel, two girls are playing in the main square on one of the cities, incredibly talented. It was warm, but more clouds on the, in the sky that day. So... I love it. And speaking of a low angle, this is our low angle morning, right? So you are quite low. What does that do to your subject? What does that do? I'm leaving that question open. Because <laughs> angles are really important. So what it does is it highlights your subject. It makes them more dominant in the frame. It gives them uh, a, a, the feeling that they're taller and they're definitely... In the, in the spotlight here, if you if you were up high and you look down, you do just just the opposite. In filmmaking, they use those up upward shots to look down to emphasize. Either they're using it because they want to show the location shot, or they're emphasizing, like I'm the vil villain and I'm up here and I'm looking down at all these people. They're really small. I'm really big. They're really small. That's uh, how it's used in filmmaking. And the, and the reverse is true. If you want to make a villain look really big and bad and mean, you get really low and look up at them. Uh, in this case, we don't, we're not trying to make these girls look mean. They're super sweet, cute. I love the, what's exuding from them, you know, this musicality. I can almost hear the violins and the joy coming out of them. Is, that's the expression, and that's wonderful. And, you, you know, cho choosing that angle was great. And we have this, you know, uh, uh, diagonal lines going off uh, diagonally, uh, you know, with the building behind them. Excellent. I love it. I love the story. I love the story. Imposing. Yeah, you can make people look imposing. But these girls are not imposing. But I, I gave you an example in one of these classes about... Uh, Annie Leibovitz shooting Arnold Schwarzenegger from uh, up in Sun Valley. It's a great photograph. <laughs> they dug a trench in the snow to put Annie in. And so she was below the snow line, and he's standing up, really looking imposing. You can Google it. 
and check it out. So using angles is a, a great tool in your photography, and I love to see you guys doing this. All right. Who is All right. our next person? We're actually going to take a step back because Ellen posted the original photo because ah. she said she had to crop in a lot and uh, she wasn't kidding. So this is the, the photo that we saw. Yeah. And then the original photo is this. Oh, wow. Totally changed. So let's it. put those yeah. side by side uh, as a. So, yeah. Completely changes the story from a mundane. Really, and there's no there's nothing there. I mean, you wouldn't even stop and look at that one. And you found within it, you found your image. Okay, good job. And I'm guessing that you shot with RAW when you did that, which is what allowed you to be able to process zoom it. in yeah. and process it that way. So important for always shooting RAW. You know, I am not a... <sighs> Doton was talking about this, some photographers. You know, when I went to film school or photography school, you, you not only had to not crop, but you had... To, you basically showed the edge of your negative, just like Amy did, but it was a real negative, to prove that you did not crop it. <laughs> you know, which is an interesting ex exercise in learning how to crop with your feet. You know, in this case, we didn't have zoom lenses at all. And we didn't have, I had one lens that I basically shot with all the time, a 35 millimeter lens. So you had to do a lot of moving around to get where she got with this. And I am not a purist at all. I say, if you can crop and tell a better story, go for it. We're not photojournalists where we have to leave everything, you know, exactly as you saw it. All right. So all right. good. Thanks for showing us that. So this one is from our friend, Chicagoland Jared. Uh, and he took this one. He said, as much as I like black and white for street photography, sometimes the color palette contributes to the story. I think this is one example from last Saturday in Chicago. A new friend uh, was my punctuation point. Yeah. I uh, manual focus vintage lens uh, got down really low and waited for Earl to cross the street. Good, good work there. Oh, yeah. Look at the shiny street because it's been raining. And there's the L above you, right? There's the elevated train of Chicago. So that's pretty classic, iconic. It, it tells us where you are. And, you know, Earl, I guess you got to know him a little bit. Earl's walking into the frame, which is cool. That looks works really well. And there's all this, you know, street scene behind it, which gives it, like you were saying, you wanted to, you know, with the one that Doton was uh, cropping, you want to leave that one building in because it's very, oh, the two of them, actually, they're very classic, iconic Chicago locations. And you've done the same thing here. You've you've left, you know, uh, a lot of the scene, I'm guessing you had a 35 millimeter lens, just guess, maybe it was even wider. Um, and, you know, you didn't bother with the rule of thirds. Good for you, because it doesn't, that's not a rule. <laughs> and so also notice that we have different frames going on here. I love frames within frames. I'm, I'm always a fan of this. So you have the frame with Earl in it. You know, it's a rectangle there. You can maybe cursor that, uh, Jared. Okay. Yeah, no, over the right. Yeah, this frame up there around around Earl to the right. Yeah, that that's a rectangle there showing him. Then we got another rectangle to the left of the L uh, beam in there. Okay, that's another frame. Then you've got, you know, you've got the foreground, which is its own. It's not necessarily a frame itself, but it's a, you know, you've got, you've got your foreground, you've got your middle ground, you've got a background. Works really well. Good job. And it's right. the sign of the times. He's wearing his mask. Nobody's on the street. Because that's a, look, how often would you find Chicago that empty, right? Yeah, at any time of day. Any time of day. That tells a story. 2021. All, all right. This one is taken by Paolo. Uh -huh. uh, and this was taken in the streets of Brussels. I love it. <laughs> it makes me laugh because it's just, 
it's just a cool image, you know, and I, I love the way you took advantage of this railing to put those people in the frame of the railing. You know, they each have their own little side to this railing. Um, and there they are. They're the punctuation points. They're actually the subject of the photograph. And they each have their own side. It's kind of like a metaphor. You've got a metaphoric photograph. And you are also low angling looking up. <laughs> Another example of looking up on a fairly low angle. Because if you think about it, this uh, railing is, what, four feet high, let's say. You're a few inches above the railing, so I don't know, you're four and a half feet. And that's, oh, 45. Okay, cool. Um, that was Jared's lens. Um, but anyway, this is a cool feeling because it, it leads our eye right to those subjects, leading lines going right there, and then we got the buildings on the other side. That, And it works really well as a black and white. Well done. And, I, you know, the other thing is it's a split kind of... Uh, image in terms of the upper half is very bright because there's light there right it makes makes sense right it's well lit they are backlit there's a lot of light coming from you know the sun and behind them so they're backlit they're silhouetted and the lower part is not because there's no light there so it's a kind of a cool juxtaposition there contrast is a great composition tool and contrast doesn't just mean black and white contrast, which in this case it is, but it's just the contrast between upper half, backlit, lower half, you know, just ambient light that's kind of coming around. So good good work. You, you're actually using, I don't know, maybe four different composition tools all in once. You're using composition, you're using contrast, you're using leading lines, you're using punctuation points. And those are just the ones I see off the top of my head. So, and then a low angle. So there's four right there and that just kind of, there they are. So well done. All right. Our next one, this is from Divya and it has the title Isolated. Wow, cool. You're photographing through a window, it looks like, right? You are isolated because there's a lot of reflection coming back. And what's cool about it is we have, you know, you got a punctuation point with the sun, the starburst. The, the tree is uh, interesting reflection going on there. You got a tree and another tree reflecting. I'm not quite sure how you're doing that. Is it a car window or? Something is causing the reflection in the middle there of another branch. It's a very interesting photograph. It's just boom. And uh, black and white works really well. I love the, the haziness surrounding, you know, we've got, we've got a lot of it in, in focus, very sharp, and then we got all this hazy stuff because of the, um, the reflection. And I love that you're playing around with that. That's really cool. Take advantage of what you see out there. You know, that's a really good example of you're working with whatever you got. And look for it. You know, you're going to find these cool little gems out there. And this is, this is really cool. Bravo. I, All right. One thing I just said, I don't know if you, what, if you process it with Silver Effects Pro. Uh, if you didn't, I would invite you to do so. You're going to pull out a lot more dynamic range out of that. You, you know, you've done a really good job. But you could you could you could pull it up even more and I think add to uh, the impact of that. Just try it out if you haven't already done so. Jared commented, "Almost looks like a double exposure." It does, doesn't it? Maybe it is. It could be. Uh, if not, still very cool. Oh, there are two trees. Two trees, but are we having a reflection from something? Right. Isn't that what's going on here? Are we, we're reflecting off a window, or what are we looking at here? I, it doesn't matter. It's not necessary to, to understand these things behind a photograph, but yeah. I'm just curious. Okay, cool. All right. Try uh, it out. Our it's next free. One There's a 30 day pre uh, download on Silver Effects Pro, by the way. Yep. All right. Uh, so we're going to take a look quick at the Facebook club. Richard has two photos, which are you know, of the same scene, but one of them obviously is capturing 
motion to different oh, degrees. Wow. Interesting. Let's see those together again, or, or separately. Let's see. Okay. And the other one? Yeah, I find the first one more interesting because it's... Let's go back to the other one again. Yeah. I like that mom is walking into the frame and we get to see her, you know? And there's an expression there. Uh, but they're both very interesting. I, I like the reflection oh, there's over another, here, too. another individual over here. Let's move me out I, of the I way. think that's uh, just the reflection oh, off Oh, there's of... a reflection. Hey, this is reflection day. What do you know? <laughs> it's low angle reflection day. So, and you're actually shooting up to mom here a little bit. But that reflection is so cool. Go back to the other one, because I... See, I like to see this stuff. Yeah, okay. Absolutely, I would go with the this one here. See, it just has more, to me, more story. Go back to the other one, Jared. It just has more of a story, and I love, you know, another frame within the frame. You got it. Mom framed over here. Mom framed here. Child, you know, in the more foreground area, and then the background. This is a... This is a cool image. Could work really well as a photo story, you know. Child is not crying. There's no alarm or anything going off here. Mom is just walking into the frame. And uh, it tells a story. It's also, you know what I like about it? It could be anywhere in the last... I mean, the stars, I would say, you didn't really... You probably wouldn't have seen those in the 50s, but in the 60s, for sure... So it could be any time in the last 60 years. It's, it's a timeless photograph. And that's, that's also very cool. I don't see anything in there that gives it away as when it was shot. You know, maybe there's a... Any, I don't see anything. So it could be very old. You know, it could be, again, 50, 60 years ago. That's really old. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> That's way older than me. Okay, so great, great job, black and white, bingo. Right. Works, works great, works awesome. While we're on the theme of looking at uh, some directly from the AYP club, uh, here's another one. This is from Marco, um, and I just couldn't pick one from the series. Marco, uh, I love your name. But, but all these photos were oh, nice really job. good from this series of developing film. It looks oh, like. Oh, wow. These are film images. Oh, yes. Look at this. Wow. Look at the juxtaposition of <laughs> your developing mm -hmm. tank and an iPhone. Man, I never had an iPhone when I was developing this stuff. And I love your notebook over to the right. You're keeping notes on your development. I used to do that, too. And that's a really smart thing. Just do it analog in a notebook. There you are. Very cool. It's a whole story. Look at this. Wow. Does that bring back memories? 35 yeah, millimeter. I, I thought oh, you'd like seeing these photos. Yeah, this is brilliant. So who is the developer? Who's the photographer in this, Marco? You're doing the That's photographing. Who's, who's the developer? Anyway, this... This brings back so many memories, you guys. Here's the deal. Back in these days, the moment of truth. Did I F it up or did I expose it right? We didn't look in the back of the camera. There was no camera back to look into. We didn't know until we rolled out that film like the photographer's doing right there, if we had it or not. We could have screwed it up. It was the moment of truth. And I have had bad rolls of film. And it's disheartening to know that you exposed it all incorrectly. Or there was a light leak in your camera and it all got streaked. Oh, man. There's so many ways you can mess up a roll of film. Or there was a piece of grit stuck in the film so that when it advanced, it made a, a line in the film. It scratched the film. Yikes. Anyway... We're so spoiled in our digital world, but this is a beautiful sequence. Thank you so much. That is super cool, and I'm, I'm, my hats are hats off to you. Did you photograph this, Marco? Tell us about the model or the subject, rather, and where are you? How were you photographing it? Were you were you shooting film or were you digital? Anyway, I love this photo story. Would you? I don't know if you're in the AYP Plus. 
membership. I don't believe they are. I would invite you to join, and I would love to have you post this sequence in there. I'd love to talk about it some more. I, I, I just, so cool to have some illustrations of, uh, you know, film in our modern world. Okay, good, All right. good job, Marco. And then we'll do one more from the AYP Club. This one's from uh, Lorraine. Uh, working on composition at home today since the weather is wild today. Yeah. Any and all critique is welcome. I was having some trouble focusing. Maybe uh, there was too low of light, so I tried manually focusing sometimes. So. Yes, please do that. Don't rely on autofocus. It can mess you up. Um, interesting. Okay. So just kind of going through the yeah, images. Those are, cool. to... those are cool. I love it. Yeah. And it's a great way to work on your composition skills when you can't go outside. Definitely. Absolutely. You know, in the AYP book, I have a section um, on still life photography. It's it's a whole genre, and it, you're, that's what you're doing here. So good on not doing manual focus, or pardon me, autofocus, for a couple of reasons. You know, you're getting your... You have a shallow depth of field, so you got to watch it. You, this one, so the lemon isn't quite in focus. You know, that's a choice. Uh, I don't know if that was on purpose or not. I'd probably make the lemon in focus as opposed to the interesting pottery behind it. That would be the only minor critique. But I, I love that you're you're taking advantage. This is great. <laughs> I want you guys to photograph every day no matter what, whether it's raining or snowing or you're, you're, you're lo in a lockdown or whatever. Just keep photographing and take advantage of that time. I mean, it is what it is. So we're in the environment we're in. Photograph. So well done on that, Lorraine. All right. So going back now to some of the other photos that we've got here. Uh, here is one by... Uh, Spas. Uh, wow. Let me find the note that comes with this. Obviously, Formula One racing uh, here. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, this is a shot for me that encapsulates what Ferrari means in F1. Whoa. A lot of speed, a lot of red. Uh, yeah. The fans love, and what is really sharp is the logo and the driver. So, the emphasis of the whole image is where it needs to be. Brilliant. And what he did here is he was panning the camera. That's how that background, everything is blurred. So he had to pan the camera pretty swiftly, right? Be he, to get the logo sh sharp and the car more or less sharp. It's absolutely fine that it's not perfectly sharp because there's speed going on here. And that gives an incredible feeling of speed. The fans are all blurred in the background. I don't know any other way you could get that without a quick pan. And I don't know if you uh, shot that on a tripod. I'm guessing you probably did, but maybe not. You might have just done a handheld pan. That's a trick. It's not easy to do that. You pulled it off. Well done. Speed, color, yes. Ferrari, uh, excitement, motion. It's all happening. That's great. Well done. <laughs> You guys just are doing such good work. I love it. I love to see this work. Make yes, sure you're getting prints made. Look, I'm not just advertising Bay Photo. You got to make prints of these images, you guys. And, uh, you know, single prints or put them in a book. So definitely be doing that, okay? Yeah. Killer or capture. I like that. All right. Here's one from Yvette. And I'll... Zoom in a little bit more. That one. Yeah, let's see what's going on here. Make it a, even bigger if you can. Yvette, there's the underground, right? I see the tube sign over there. And um, you've got a guy looking in his wallet, it looks like, to me, I think, right? Looking for some money. It's very soft focus. Um, you know, it almost... I. You know, the feeling I get from this is a, a a camera that didn't have focus on it. And perhaps there's a little bit of shakiness because you're, you, you know, you're, I don't know if that's soft focus because you weren't focused 100% or a long, too, little too long an exposure. 
I would like to see him sharp. I don't know. I, I, I could, I get it the way it is. Um, you know, to me, it would be like older camera, little sh long exposure, shot with film. Couldn't, you know, didn't really have the latitude to get uh, uh, for whatever, you know, hold it still. So that's okay, but I don't. It doesn't quite work for me. The train is sharper than the guy. Uh, I would reverse that. I'd flip that around. Tra train's in motion. I make him sharp and the train moving. That's just, you know, my own preference. The railroad tracks, the angles uh, of the stuff on the ground there, yeah, all that's leading lines, which is really interesting, and diagonal lines. A very interesting photograph. That would be my only critique. I would sharpen him, let the train blur by. I also like that you got the two people like looking into each other. Oh, look at that! Yeah, and like they're kind of doing almost the exact same motion too. Yeah, interesting. They're kind of yeah, that's right. They're almost mirror mirroring each other there. That's cool. That yeah, is I a like cool, that. good good call there, Jared. Yeah. All right, and our next one. This is from Roberto, uh, wow. and this was uh, taken. He said from last weekend, from when he posted. Uh, and that it was taken in Miami. Great image. Father kissing the baby who's about to... That's... That baby's going to emerge pretty soon. By the way, we're having a new Silber. <laughs> uh, Henry Silber already has a name. My son Bear and his wife Becca, B&B &B Silber, are having a baby... Possibly as early as next week. Um, wow. Yeah. New member to our clan. So she's about that pregnant. Anyway, that's a beautiful photograph. The sun over her, that's just, uh, you know, just adds that final touch of almost like the spirit of her, you know, or perhaps the spirit of the child waiting for the birth to assume this cool body and there's so much love there and you know there's so many things about this that are a great image the reflection the palm trees and the uh, blue hour no it's not a blue hour because there's the sun but it's you know you've 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 uh, you've pulled your exposure down so you're 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 getting the shadows and the uh you, you were very good and not letting anything blow out you went to the you know other end of uh uh, underexposing it. Yeah, it's that's a great image. Bingo. Well done. Well done, Roberto. All right. Congrats. This Thank you. Yeah, we're... And, yes. and <laughs> we have another one happening in August. A girl. <laughs> so 2021, we're adding two new grandchildren to the mix here very busy year for you guys busy year it gives me more models if you've seen my photographs oh yeah you know i like to use my grandsons as a <laughs> they're they're fun to photograph and they are uh, i love the photos that you have of your grandkids thank you and they i someday i'm gonna have to pay them royalties because they're in my books <laughs> <laughs> the parents tease All me right. about that this one is from steven and uh, the message he put with this one was, Hello, everyone. I'd love some feedback on this photo I took. My goal was to capture this beautiful sunset and landscape. I'd love feedback on the composition, colors, and edit. Well, come on. You know this is a... this is a You hit a home run here, Stephen. So um, it reminds me of Cabo San Lucas. It's not, but Cabo San Lucas has that arch, you know, very classic arch. I'm guessing this is our... Local California coastline, maybe Half Moon Bay or something. I don't know where that is exactly. I th I love it. I think it's, you know, it's got all the stuff you want in an image. It's got the punctuation of the sun, the starburst, the um, it's got a foreground with the with the rocks in the foreground, and it's got a middle ground with the you know that archway, and then the background with the clouds and the ocean. Bingo. Boom. You got it. I, 
you know, could you, could you have waited around and gotten the sun blasting through that archway? No, you couldn't because there's the ocean there. It was not even possible in that shot. No, nope, you got it. Talked myself out of that. I thought, well, maybe you could have waited another or moved over to the right, but it wouldn't have worked. So anyway, you got it. It's a great image. It's I love the I love the tonality of it. Just that warm light and uh it all works oh uh stephen pointed out that there's even a footprint right oh, there look just at that. one lone footprint nice nice good catch one. stephen i hadn't even noticed that stephen to stephen okay good work speaking of stephen let's go ahead and pull up one of i his. thought i was talking to that stephen that's why i was talking about nope, this Kaplan is different Bay. stephen uh this is uh the stephen who just commented uh, and in this one said, I've never really spent any time cause, uh, people who are in the community know Steven does a lot of, uh, zoo shots. He's yeah, really good right. at them. He said, I never really spent any time to develop my landscape skills. He's always been more involved with animals and people. Uh, but these photos are just within two miles of the house that they are renting, uh, oh, wow. until they can get their house in Arizona built. I have no idea what the grassy, what the red grassy plant is but I have been meaning to capture this image for a couple of months. Finally, after a rain, the sky cooperated and gave me something I didn't feel needed to be replaced. Yeah, I mean, it's a really interesting image with the grass, the red, whatever that is, in the foreground and the beautiful sky you got. I love clouds, you know. Blue sky, eh, not so much for a photograph. Because, you know, clouds give you a lot of depth. They add all sorts of dimensions to your photograph. So always, you know, whenever, like today, I should be out, although it's not cloudy, it's raining. It's not, the clouds are so low, we can't do anything. But um, yeah, Stephen, my only thing is, I'd love to see you incorporate your, your skill of ca capturing animals and maybe find a bird to fly into this frame. Oh, I think there might be a very tiny, that might, or nope, that's just something on my screen. That would be Maybe. my only thing. I'd, I'd love that? to see a punctuation. Yeah, that's point. a bird, I think, okay, right there. there. It is. All right, all right. Maybe, uh, maybe come in a little bit on that. But, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm guessing that, you know, you're, a, you're, a, you're an animal photographer, so I'm guessing they just weren't there. Otherwise, you would have. Um, but it's a classic landscape, you know, it's a, it's, it's something I would see as part of a story of where you are right now. Um, good job. And I love the color, you know, the juxtaposition of the red with the, with the blue and, you know, the, the clouds, the, the, uh, you know, the water line that's in the, in the uh, middle ground there. Again, we have layers, we have foreground, middle ground, background. That always works in a photograph because you add depth and you add interesting you know details that way yeah go back just see you know you got those animals chops and i would just say use that as your set there's a beautiful set there just hang out until somebody flies by it's about the only animal you're probably going to find in that frame and i don't know what else could pop up i don't think anything like a squirrel or whatever in the that wouldn't really work but i'd love to see a bird in there if you could anyway keep us posted and see let's see how that goes okay we got time um, for a few more let's see yeah we got a couple more and then we can do our drawing quick uh thank you guys for joining us i've seen more people come into the uh critique show one just joined us right now so welcome to whoever you are for joining us and uh next time get in here at 10 so you can see all these other cool stuff and bring your own photographs okay film this is not yep. faked remember i was talking about light streaks a moment ago okay the left hand edge put your cursor over that that's a light streak right there now, it didn't encroach into the frame, but that's what a light streak looks like, and it can encroach. There's a little light streak, which means you got a little leak in your camera. Again, it's not messing you up because it's not hitting the 
inside of the frame, but you might want to check it out so it doesn't get worse. Because if that, if that spills into the frame, it's going to mess things up. Okay, what are we shooting with here? Uh, we've got, it's a Lubitel two twin lens reflex shot. Okay. Uh, with a HP five pushed to, uh, eight, uh, to, um, one eight hundredth or wait, no, to 800 ISO. Okay. Uh, F F eight and a 42 second exposure Whoa. counting in for reciprocity failure. I know it's a bit off. <laughs> That's a lot uh, of technical stuff. Well, yeah. just let's translate that for a minute. So what he's talking about is he's taking a film that is probably rated at, I don't know, what did you say, four times? Did he say that? Uh, two? I, I or, uh... Anyway, you pushed the, you can do this, you guys. You can take film and make it double or triple, sometimes quadruple its, its ISO. Film is set for a certain ISO, right? Unlike our camera or digital cameras. So he pushed it up to a much higher level, uh, and he had a really long exposure. F8 at how many seconds? 42-second uh, exposure. That's a long exposure, right? I love the way it, it, it got the lights in the city with that long exposure. There's a frame there underneath it. So bravo on shooting film, taking your time, putting it on a tripod, exposing it, developing it. Uh, check your light leak. <laughs> you don't want that to get, you don't want that to mess up your future images, but maybe it's been there for 10 years and it doesn't matter. I mean, cameras will do that stuff sometimes. So anyway, great. I love, I love seeing you guys shooting with film. You make me somewhat jealous. Like I should be doing that too. And one of these days, maybe I will. Okay. All right. Yeah, camera this, seals do deteriorate, and sometimes you got to replace them. <laughs> this one is from Lucas, and it is taken in uh, Munster, Ireland, in 2018. It's a great story. 2018. Okay, cool story. These kids are <laughs> portraying a variety of boredom looks to me. <laughs> it's interesting. The guy on the flute is pretty engaged, but I see a lot of bored looking faces here. I don't know if they really are bored, but they just look that way to me. But it's it's clever and it's it's engaging. It's an engaging photograph. It has, you know, works really well with black and white. It's uh, if you shot it digitally, the only little thing I would do is remove that plate at the bottom where her feet are in the center. I, I That's just me. You don't have to do it. If you're a purist, you just leave it in, but it just pulls it just pulls away a little bit, so I would just kind of let it go. And uh, anyway, good work. So listen, guys, we're gonna do one more, and I got to end off. I got a podcast I'm doing here in a few minutes on creativity. It'll be coming out probably in a couple of weeks. I'll let you guys know about it, but I got to get ready for that. So Jared, all right, one more, and we're gonna give away a month free ayp well this is awesome yes yep this is from partha sun took this photo yesterday oh. uh, outing in a local market you know this it's an intense photograph the, you know the subject is looking right at you you've got the you know shallow depth of field with all this stuff in the background blurred you haven't you've got like a lot of soft colors there you didn't you didn't darken it or do anything it's a very it's a powerful portrait and it's a portrait an environmental portrait in the in the subjects you know place so that's always powerful well done good job you guys are just doing awesome i love to see your work and i i, I love to hear your stories this is my favorite show actually it really is my favorite show of all time so I, I want to see you guys keep coming back. So, Jared, who is going to be the lucky winner today of All right. AYP Plus? I've, I've taken it, and I'm going to bring up their photo at the same time. And it is Divya. Congratulations. Wow. I'll be sending you a link on Facebook where well you can done. click 
claim your free month of AYP Plus. We look forward to, and so, and for anybody else that is interested, I'm going to bring up the link and put it in chat. You get, we have uh, live lessons and you can look at all the past lessons too. It's a great deal and we're really excited about we're building that the community. things that are going on there. And we have they, special classes by Dan Milner and uh, Dota and Sagai's. And we're going to have more. All right, guys. Like I said, I got to run. But before I do, I want to remind you to subscribe and enable the bell. And don't forget, stay well, stay safe, and don't forget to get out and capture your own images of life. Love you guys. See you soon. Keep photographing every single day.